Hello there my friends, hope you all are having a fantastic day right now. In this video, we shall be solving a really fun chess problem using Python. So, let's get started. So, the problem that we are going to be solving is called the Knight's Tour. And the objective of this problem is to move the knight through the chessboard such that the knight visits every cell in the chessboard so for example if the knight starts from this position then it can move to this position and it can come here and can go like this and in the end it should have covered every cell on the chessboard and every cell should have been visited by it only once so that is the objective of this problem and this is a really famous problem and there have been many mathematicians who have been able to find solutions to this problem without any algorithms. And I also read somewhere that the ancient Indians also had found solutions to this problem. So having said that, let's look at how we can go about writing the algorithm to solve this problem. So the algorithm that we are going to be using will be called Wansdorf algorithm and and according to this algorithm we can solve this problem by placing the knight in a cell which has minimum number of possibilities that is let's say we place the knight here and in the next step we can either come to this cell or we can go to this cell so among these two cells we have to move to that cell which has the lesser number of possibilities. So if you see the possibilities of this cell, it can either go here or it can go here or it can come here or it can go here, it can go here too and yep, I guess that's it. So we have five possibilities while if you see from this cell then one, two, three, four and five so this was not the best case to explain this because we have got a tie here and we can move to either of the cells in that case we just choose one cell and go to that cell but we always choose that cell which has the least number of possibilities generally speaking so that's how this algorithm works and let's now move to python and write the code so now we are in python and we can start implementing the Vansdorf algorithm so first let us define our chessboard globally so chessboard equals we're going to go for an 18 to 81 although the knights too is possible for different dimensions as well so we've got to define a two-dimensional list having a total of 64 cells yep so now that we've got a chessboard we can go ahead and write our functions so the first function that we'll be writing is the print board function so we need to see the result so we will have to print the board so for i in range 8 for j in range 8 print chessboard I j and n equals this or we can have a space and after each row we will have a slash in so now if we call this function we should see the board getting printed so yep there it is so that's our board and it has 64 cells so now we can start defining our possibility lists. So if you recall the rules of chess, then you would know that a knight can move in an L shape. And for example, if we are here, then we can go here or we can go here and so on and so forth. So there are eight possibilities, but we should also take care that we do not move out of the board. So we will start addressing these as we go on. So the first thing that we be doing is 
we will define two tuples that is one for moving laterally and one for moving longitudinally so that we know what the possibilities are from a certain position. So let me have a tuple called pause x and another tuple called pause y. So what we're going to do in these two tuples is that we will be defining by how much the position of the knight has to change so that it can move to its new position. So the first position that we will be looking at is this one right here. So right and down. So if you go to move right and down, then your x value should change by 2 and your y value should change by 1. So that's our first possibility. And next we will be moving right and down, but one right and two down. So one right, two down. So that's our second possibility. And next we will move right and move up. So we have got all the possibilities right here and these x and y values correspond to where we have got to move next. So from each position you can move to eight other positions. That's all that it means. So let's say we are at a particular position. So let's say we are here and that means that we are at zero zero. So let's initialize x to zero and y to zero. So let's say we want to find the different parts on the board that we can move to when we are at 0, 0. So what we will have to do is for i in range 8 because we have to choose from a total of 8 possibilities. If x plus cos x of i greater than or equal to 0 and this is less than equals 7 and y plus cos y of i greater than equals 0 and y plus cos y of i less than equals 7. So what we are doing is we are checking if the possible cell is a cell in this board or if it's outside. If it's outside, we are not going to consider that because that's not part of the board. So that's what we are doing. So we'll be printing this and this. So let's see how this works. So let's not print the board now and let's see what values get printed. So 2, 1 and 1, 2. And all that means to say is if you are at 0, 0, then you can either go to this position that is 2 1 or 1 2 which is this so there are only two possibilities from the first cell so what we can do is we can convert this into a function so that it is flexible so we can call it get possibilities yeah so that's that and what we'll do is we will pass x and y as arguments so that the function gets more flexible. Yep. So that's that. And we can as well make this a local thing. And now all we have got to do is to implement one's DOF's algorithm. That is, we have to find which possibility or which cell has minimum possibilities. So we'll call this solve. And inside this function, we will have to actually get the lengths of the possibilities of each cell and select the minimum one from that. So in order to do that, we will have to modify this function a little bit. So we will have to make this function return a list so that we can traverse through the elements in the list and find the minimum. So let this function return a list called possibilities. So initially, possibilities will be an empty list and instead of this print statement what we'll do is we will append a list of these two to this possibilities list yep 
Yep. So now this possibilities list will have all the values that are possible so that we can traverse through that and the solve function. So inside the solve function, first we will need the possibilities. So get possibilities and the starting point will be 0, 0 because that's where we want to start solving this. And once we have got the possibilities, we will store it in this list called pos. So once we have got pos, what we'll do is we will have a variable called minimum and set it to the first element of pos. So if there is only one element, then that is the minimum element. So once we have got the minimum, we need to compare it to the other elements in pos. So what we have got to do is traverse through the elements in pos. So what we're going to do now is traverse through the elements in pos and check if there is a new minimum which is even smaller than the current minimum. So if the length of get possibilities of this element p that is p of 0 and p of 1 is less than or equal to the length of get possibilities of minimum of 0 comma minimum of 1 then minimum equals p i hope this made sense to you guys so what we are doing here is we are checking for a smaller value than the current minimum value and once we complete this for loop then that means that we have found the minimum and we are ready to place the knight at that position so we have to change the current position of the knight to the minimum position so x will be minimum of 0 and y will be minimum of 1 so here x and y are the current positions of the knight and this code will work for the first iteration that is when we are at 0 0 but we have to do the same process 64 times so in order to do that we will have to put this inside a for loop so for i in range 64 so we will be executing these statements 64 times and this will actually help us in solving the problem and this is all the algorithm is about but if we want to see the results on the console then we would have to make some changes what we can do is we can track the movement of the knight by using numbers so for example if we first place the knight at the first box then we can change it to one from zero and if we move the knight to this place then we can change this to two so that we understand that that is the path of the knight and that's exactly what we are going to do as well so what we'll do is we will set a variable called counter make counter to 2 and already make this 1 and the reason we are doing this is because we are pretty sure that we want to start iterating from the first cell in the chessboard so this makes a lot of sense and if we have done that then we should also make the 63 because the first cell has already been filled and if you notice here we should also change this to x comma y because x and y are the current positions of our knight and once we have done that we are good to go we can place the knight at the current position so x y equals counter and we should also not forget to increment counter by one and this would fill the whole board for us so x will be zero and y will also be zero and another important thing that we should do in the get possibilities function is that we should also check if the place is empty because a position is possible only if it is equal to zero if it is any other number then there is no use placing a knight over there 
so that's another constraint that we have to include over here so x plus that is this and this if that part of the chest board is zero only then is the position valid so that's the change that we have got to do there and i guess that's that and if we now call the solve function and the print board function it should work without any errors so there it is so as you can see the board goes from here to here and and so on until 64 so 64 is here so that's that we have solved the night store problem using the once dof algorithm and implemented this algorithm in python so that's that guys i hope you guys enjoyed this video so that's it bye for now guys and i'll see you guys in the next video